Ah, the holidays. Roaring fires. Kittens. The family all gathered around playing Monopoly and eating something. And potential cat disasters waiting around every corner. The Christmas catastrophe, as it were. I know. I know. Well, I'm here to help you. As always, breaking out of this weird little accent that I had. So let's do that because this is Mindy and she didn't like my accent one little bit. So let's talk about the potential problems that you face during the holiday season if you have cats and the hacks that I can provide to get you through it without winding up at the ER at 3 o'clock in the morning with your cat. So, let's get to it. Now stop, before we go any further, okay? I want you to settle down. There is hope for Christmas. You can have a great holiday. You can have a wonderful New Year's. You can have all the things you want because for everything that I d identify as potentially hopeless, I'm gonna give you hope. I'm gonna give you a hack. Hack equals hope. There we go. Okay, now let's get into it. Okay, so let's get a little bit of a frame around the holidays and having cats. You like to decorate. You like to play into the fact that it is the holidays and all of the sort of accoutrements that go along with it. I like saying the word accoutrements when I'm wearing an ascot, just FYI. And then you have your cat. Your cat is a toddler that can reach the ceiling. Always think of it that way. They are curious like a toddler. They'll just break stuff for the fun of breaking it and seeing what happens to it. And they live in a vertical world. Your, your cat's body is uniquely made to go up. Your cat's going to want to climb the Christmas tree. I mean, not all cats, but a lot of cats just want to see what it's all about to get that vantage point. What happens next? Your tree is on the floor. The presents are ruined. You have water all over the place and your cat may get hurt in the process. So the easy hack here is make sure that your tree is bolted to the wall. Think about it in terms of one of those scratching posts that's just kind of flimsy. Your cat goes to scratch, it winds up on the ground. That simple. Hack number one is making sure that your tree is tied to something on the wall, period. Let's face facts. Ornaments are, are they're reflective. They move around a little bit. They dangle. They are cat toys. They're the best cat toy in the whole wide world. Your cat's going to want to knock those around. I mean, seriously, if you have a cat and you have glass ornaments hanging off your tree, I mean... Do you really need me to tell you that? Well, maybe you do, that's why we're here. Don't do it. Don't have the reflective ones. Don't have the ones that are made of glass. The hack is, if you're going to use ornaments on your tree, yes, I know everybody does, just tie it up nice and tight to the branch. Don't let it swing, because that's the invitation to catastrophe. Another hack, when you think about, again, we're thinking about toddler, we're thinking about toddler, presents under the tree. I mean, those presents are, God, let's face it, again, it's an invitation. Ooh, there's something to scratch and rip. Ooh, there's, there's ribbon. I can play with them because I've been granted permission because they're here. If they're here, they belong to me. The hack is, I know, please don't get angry at me, you don't put the toys down until Christmas morning. So they're not sitting there with everybody sort of salivating about them for a month. Your cat's not going to salivate, they're just going to tear it apart. So look, let's face it, we gotta keep your cat away from the Christmas tree. There's more examples I'm gonna give you in a little bit, but if you wanna keep your cat away, one of the best deterrents I've seen, this is a hack that I first learned about 20 years ago. Basically all you do is it, most cats, and don't, I don't wanna hear it from you guys. Oh, my cat loves citrus. Oh, my cat thrives on lemon or whatever. Okay, fine. But most cats don't really dig the, uh, the smell of citrus. So the solution becomes kind of easy. You zest orange peels, grapefruit peels, lemon peels. You put them in a baggie. You poke holes all through the baggie and you put them around the bottom of the tree. You're putting out a smell that your cat may not wanna go near and that's a nice little hack. Now finally, if you don't want your cat near the Christmas tree, which I, I think is a fair assumption based on what I'm saying, then you can create a barrier around there with things that are just not fun if you're your cat. One of the easiest and, and really the least intrusive things, they're compressed air canisters, and I've used them for a long time, where if they're, they've got an electric eye pretty much, they're battery operated, you put them around the tree. If your cat starts to walk that perimeter, they just get a little puff of air and a sound. It just makes it so that they make the association that this might not be the best place to be. So hopefully they won't be there. But and if you've been following me for any amount of time, you know this, but if you're gonna say no to your cat, you gotta say yes to them. This is a place of social gathering. It's an important place because we have invested it with that importance. So we want your cat to be a part of it. One of the best ideas is the cat mystery bringing in a brand new cat tree for your cat, their Christmas present, right? And it goes nearby the actual Christmas tree. Not near enough for your cat to jump from A to B, 
but just enough that they can get some verticality, observe the room, and you can get all kinds of brand new stuff for them, toys and little blankets and beds, so that we can use them as scent soakers. Your cat can own a piece of the room where the tree is and maybe be a little less inclined to go there. No, we're gonna put these little air blaster things around the tree or the citrus or anything else you wanna do. And then yes, here's your cat mystery. Now that is a hack. Now this whole toddler thing, that's just the beginning. The, the other category is the category where th there are things in your home at the holidays that can really hurt your cat. They can make a mess. You can wind up in the ER in the middle of the night. Your cat's life could be in danger from a lot of the stuff. And our old friend, the Christmas tree, comes right back in the picture. There's a lot of things about your tree that can really do a lot of harm to your cat. Let's start with the pine needles themselves. Your cat is chomping on there. Those things are sharp and they will just wreak havoc on their way down, perforating everything in its path, potentially causing blockages and really just a whole lot of pain as they try to pass it. It's just, it's just too dangerous. Then you've got the water that your tree is sitting in, that sappy water. Absolutely, 100% toxic to your cats. So if they go in that water and they drink it, it could be game over right there. So there's more danger. Now let's talk about the things that go on your tree. Tinsel. I personally know cats who have passed away from eating tinsel. It just goes down and it's a lasso for the organs in your cat's body wrapping around their intestines. You know, if you don't get to it in time and get them into emergency surgery, bad things can happen. So that's tinsel. Flocking, which is that white sort of spray a lot of times that looks like snow, totally toxic to your cat if they eat the pine needles covered in flocking. What about the wires? There's wires all over the place connected to the wall, which can be connected to your cat's mouth if you're not, if you're not smart. Uh, am I missing anything? Oh, by the way, ribbons. Yes, ribbons that cover your gifts and your cat eats it. And again, terrible things can happen. So you've really got to be on your toes. I know all you traditionalists out there are like, oh God, why did I get a cat? You got to say no to certain things. Get a fake tree. It is just the easiest hack that you can possibly do to prevent all of these catastrophes. Or you could just do something like this. I, I mean, that's genius. Untraditional, but they had a tree or just go the plastic tree. That, so we're done talking about the tree. Now let's move on to other holiday horror. But no, it's not holiday horror. It's holiday hope because it's a hack. Let's move on. Now, as we're going through the holidays in the spirit of giving, why not give me something, which is you subscribing to this channel. I mean, it's for both of us, really. We can share. And also you can ring the bell so that you get notifications for all kinds of cool stuff. And if you look right next to the subscribe button, you'll see the join button. And that's all about our new club called the Mojo Knots. And there's tons of fun stuff going on there uh, from private posts to outtakes to bonus footage, behind the scenes stuff. And we have a private Discord channel and private chat. I mean, tons of great stuff. So go ahead and hit that join button as well. That's a happy holiday for all of us. So now we put the tree to bed. Now we're gonna, we're gonna continue on with other things besides your Christmas tree that could be really dangerous for your cat. And, and I, I wanna make sure that I lay this out for you guys. Everything I talk about right now, I'm gonna put links below. I'm not gonna go exploring into all of what? The foods that you leave around that can kill your cat and the plants that tend to be around, the flowers that tend to be around the holidays that can absolutely be toxic for your cats. The links I'm gonna put below in the description will run it down for you so you can make sure that you don't put out the things that can kill them and you do put out the things that won't. Well, there's a hack for you. So uh, the, here are a few things that you must avoid your cat ingesting. The first one is chocolate. Chocolate is absolutely toxic to cats and dogs. And of course, the holidays are a lot of times about chocolate. We understand, Homer. After all, we are from the land of chocolate. Mmm, the land of chocolate. So please make sure that that's not around them. And when it comes to giving your cat scraps from the table, it's cool, but cats are meant to eat meat, but not meat with like garlic all over it or barbecue or whatever that is. Another thing that you must avoid is cooked bones. Cooked bones are absolutely, it's, it's, when we talked about pine needles, that's basically what a cooked bone will do. It'll splinter, it'll go down the wrong way, it'll perforate on its way down. And here's just a taste of other things. 
uh, that could be really dangerous for your cat. Cats are actually lactose intolerant, so giving them milk is not a good thing in the first place. Eggnog makes it that much worse. Uh, so absolutely no on the eggnog. I know some of you guys are like, really? Yeah, I know that. And just to go a little step further, alcohol, also poisonous to cats. Okay, that is the obvious stuff. There's a lot of stuff that's not so obvious. Again, look in the description for everything that you need to know. And when it comes to house guests, they, they need to know this stuff too. It's, it's not enough for you to know it. The rest of your family has to have buy-in on this and just don't give it to the cats. You can say it like that. There's chocolate on the table, Junior. Don't give it to the cats. Okay, I'm done. I want to run down a few of the plants and flowers that are absolutely toxic to your cats and you have to watch out. First thing is holly. Yeah, the thing that your wreath is made of, totally toxic. Mistletoe, bad news. Amaryllis, daffodils. Uh, if we're into you know the Easter holidays, lilies. I mean, we're talking a bite of an Easter lily and your cat's in the hospital. That bad. Take a look at the list uh, prepared by the ASPCA. So don't freak out too much, but do pay it attention to what I'm saying. So this whole time we've been talking about the, the, these sort of monumental issues and the hacks that will help you get through any problems before they happen. This one is not so much apocalyptic, but it is something that gives you an opportunity to know your cat better and to help comfort them and perhaps challenge them at the same time. So what are we talking about? Catification can save Christmas and New Year's and any time where, where family gathers, where a lot of people come into your house. Now sure, your cat can be the total mojito cat, inviting everybody in, saying, hey, here's a glass of egg eggnog, whatever, but that's not every cat. And I think what we tend to see is when there's a big gathering of loud people, your cat just can't take that amount of energy in. But even if there's like three or four people, we can't just expect them to acclimate, uh, especially when they're having to share the floor with everybody. Having to compete for floor space is something that a cat doesn't need. What they do need is catification, more vertical spaces, making sure that you have perches in the windows. You know, they have prime spaces where they can hang out. Clear off the mantle, man, and, and just give them a place to chill. And if you do that, you create the cat superhighway, which I've talked about before. For the ability for your cat to, to circle the room, and I'm saying the living room right now, without touching the floor, that is an incredible holiday hack because we want them to be a part of the celebrations and not just hiding under the bed the whole time. So it's not all about solving problems and providing hacks. This hack is to build cat mojo. I'll say it again, catification is the key. So there's links in the description to other videos about catifying, and you can't go wrong with this, man. Written by me and cat style expert Kate Benjamin. Really, please pick this up. It'll give you so many ideas about how to deal with all of this. And I would be remiss not to mention this. This is my product here, Holiday Stress Stopper. It's a flower essence remedy. You can put it in food, water, apply it topically, spray it in the air around their base camp or around the living room. And uh, it really just helps energetically bring them back to center when things are flying out of control. So there you go. Look, my friends, I will say it again. There is hope for the holidays. I don't want to sound like the cat Grinch here and say just get rid of everything, have just like bare floors, you know, all that. You really can have a wonderful holiday. No matter what that holiday is, there is a way through it so that you can have a festive holiday. Your cat can have an amazing time with the family and nobody winds up tipping over a tree or winding up in the ER. I'm giving you all this. This is like your fire drill. This is stuff that you can plan ahead of time and say, all right, I can do this, I can do this, I can do this or you can be reactive about it. And then you start getting angry at your cat and, and that's just misplaced. So let's be festive, let's not project, let's not get angry, let's keep cool, let's stay out of the hospital, please. So there you have it. Put on your ascot, put on your smoking jacket, get in front of that roaring fire, which should be back there, and have yourself a wonderful holiday, whatever holiday this is. And uh, I wish you and yours all light and all love and happy, happy, ho, 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 mojo. To, no. um, and here's wishing you and your family all light, all love, all mojo. Talk to you soon. Yeah.